As expected, the primetime players become the number one contenders to face the Shield later in the night. Later in the night, the Shield, as expected, retain. So forget about the kickoff match, I really couldn't get into it. The tag team match, it was better than the kickoff, but I still expected what was going to be the outcome. Who is going to be the next tag team champions? Because right now, we've not really got the credible tag teams who we can believe can get the job done. So are the debuting upcoming tag teams going to do it? Or will the WWE have to pair two wrestlers to get the job done? If the WWE choose to pair up two wrestlers, who would you choose to be paired up to go and defeat the Shield for the Tag Team Championships? Why aren't all the championships on the line? But thanks to Triple H in the opener, Kurtz Axel's Intercontinental Championship was defended against Kofi Kingston. And as much as he can put on entertaining matches, good spots and all that, it's just a shame that he's always the predictable guy to go backstage and pull out. Why couldn't we have got a surprise like Langston, Cody Rhodes who could have done with a t uh, pay-per-view appearance, or the returning Evan Bourne, or returning Rey Mysterio, if they're well enough to wrestle that is. Because when it comes to pay-per-views, you expect special moments. So I think someone else other than the predictable Kobe Kingston, yes, he may have been teased during the build-up to this pay-per-view, but still, just give us something different. But Kurt Axel defeats Kobe Kingston in a match that almost made it look like Kobe Kingston was going to beat Kurt Axel. When we get to the match late in the night, because the handicap match still takes place, I want to expand more on what Triple H said in the opener. But for a kickoff match, it got a championship defended, it got Kurt Axel a win, ready for later in the night. So I guess, even though I didn't agree with Kobe Kingston again, it fit his purpose. The reason I wanted AJ to win is because after the promo of her burying the other divas, She's looking like the supreme diva. And right now, I believe, I think, I feel we need a diva like that. So if AJ cut that great promo and went into this match and lost, she's put herself over big time only for her to lose. So all that ego, character building would have been knocked down. But saying that, we do need a diva to eventually defeat AJ. And the fact she went into this match and defeated Brie Bella, Naomi and Natalia, it does leave us wondering who is actually going to get the job done. But I believe the feud between AJ and Natalia could continue, could branch on. But I, almost, I made a joke on Twitter saying, AJ's done with wrestlers now, she's now dating referees, getting the referees behind her. Because there was the referees pointing out the referee weren't doing his job. He was just checking out the women, watching what they were doing, instead of noticing the shoulders were down the mat, doing pinfalls and all that jazz. So I made that joke up, but well done AJ, I look forward to seeing who the WWE book to eventually defeat you. The money at the minute, still in fans' eyes, is on Natalia. It is now time for the RBD Championship match against Alberto Del Rio. Going to this match, the prediction was that Alberto Del Rio was going to retain as Ricardo Rodriguez, who doesn't quite pair up that well with Rob Van Damme, was going to turn on Rob Van Dam, giving the win to Alberto Del Rio. But instead of that, quite surprisingly, Del Rio kept on his submission move to get the win. Well, that is a good way of continuing the feud onto a later pay-per-view. 
So maybe we'll still get the Ricardo Rodriguez turn on RVD. Or maybe it's going to give RVD the late win at a later pay-per-view. But after the match, I like how the WWE gave RVD and Ricardo their little spot by doing the coast-to-coast -to, -coast to Del Rio. So maybe that shows that Ricardo Rodriguez is not going to turn on Rob Van Dam. Or maybe join the build-up three weeks build. It's going to be a building up of a let's get the fans thinking it's not going to happen. But it does happen and Ricardo turns on RVD. But either way, this match ended differently than I expected. Which is good for pay-per-views. Because it's good to be surprised or get your predictions wrong if you make predictions for pay-per-views. And plus, this feud's going to continue, which maybe if you're like me, you may not care ever so much. But for long-term booking, or at least stretching across feuds, the WWE have given us that tonight. WWE decided to add the Miz and Fandango feud match to Night of Champions. It was an expected match, which I didn't care about this feud I don't care about Miz defeats Fandango and my question is what do you Fandango fans really see in Fandango because I'm going to say it again to me he's just an entertainer yes he's got wrestling moves yes he may have some skill but the WWE for some reason hadn't beat Chris Jericho at Wrestlemania and since then Nothing's really stood out about him apart from dancing. The same thing could say about The Miz. He's not really got anything going for him. But with Fandango being a new wrestler, you expect the WWE to have more for him, right? Dean Ambrose defeats Dolph Ziggler. No real surprise there. You could say Ziggler put over Ambrose. But sadly, Ziggler's not had the best run in the WWE for quite some time. He's a great entertainer, good moves, he can wrestle, and quite good on the mic. But for some reason, the WWE have the tendency to not really give Ziggler the wins. So for quite some time, yes, he may have became World Heavyweight Champion, but he's not really had the wins to be counted as someone to put over Ambrose but i am still got my hopes up for Ziggler that something eventually will go his way Ambrose retains I'm now waiting to see even though the Shield are a part of the corporation storyline who's going to be the wrestler to face and defeat Ambrose for the United States Championship Thanks to Paul Heyman's mastermind, a no disqualification match gets added to his and Curtis Axel's match against CM Punk. But before we get to the match, the relationship between Paul Heyman and Curtis Axel is not concrete. You could tell it by the opener. Because when Triple H and Paul Heyman were talking, and Paul Heyman was worrying about his match, Curtis Axel was a sideline. He didn't really have his chance to feel like a strong dominant heel. To have confidence for the match later in the night. It, I don't know. The WWE are really letting Curtis Axel down. I didn't feel that Curtis Axel believed in himself. Believed he could beat CM Punk. He was just there sticking up for Paul Heyman's worries. Now and again. But getting to the match... The match went down as expected. Curtis Axel eventually got eliminated, which left CM Punk to fight Paul Heyman. <sighs> that disappointed me. I expected more from this fight between CM Punk and Paul Heyman. But it just turned to be a kendo stick fight. The WWE loved the kendo stick, maybe because it's user friendly and it's not a brutal weapon. Yes, I wouldn't want to be hit by one, but when it comes to wrestling, I expected more. Probably use the steel chairs, 
use the steel steps. But forget about the kendo stick fighting. The thing that stood out is fans. The term Paul Heyman guy, in my opinion, should not be rushed, should not be overused. We've had CM Punk Paul Heyman guy, Brock Lesnar, and Curtis Axel. I recently CM Punk and Curtis Axel have been with that label. I don't I don't believe that it should be given to someone else just yet. But because of Night of Champions, it feels like it's going to be get given to Ryback. The guy that's been a buddy backstage, so he's got the heel persona. But what has Ryback done that makes you feel that he's going to be one of the best guys to have as a Paul Heyman guy? Ryback hasn't won many pay-per-views that stand out. He's not had a, yes, he's been involved in big matches, but the outcome's been the same. He's been a buddy for the last month or so. I didn't, as most of it, it was a surprise. No one, from what I was aware, predicted Ryback. But he takes out CM Punk, and I'm glad Paul Heyman won. People had their money on CM Punk, but Paul Heyman, like I said, his mastermind. He had a backup plan to secure his win. This is going to continue the feud. But not against Curtis Axel. He'll probably branch off to someone else eventually. Still against Paul Heyman. But against Ryback. So we're going back to CM Punk versus Ryback feud. That I may not be looking forward to. But I will give credit to the unexpected finish. Well done Paul Heyman. Well done Ryback for making it to a pay-per-view. Well done CM Punk for being CM Punk. Kurt Axel. Well done for defeating Kofi. But I'm looking forward to seeing how the WWE continue our interest with the CM Punk storyline. And also in the opener, Triple H wanted to prove he wants to give the fans what they want. So the stipulation for this match is that there'll be no interference. No Shield, no Big Show, no Triple H, none of that jazz. So you go into this match thinking, good, a one-on-one -on -one fight between the champion Orton and the number one contender Brian. So you go into this match with high hopes, high expectations like I did. It was a good match. I say this was the main event that fans wanted to see. But the finish, when you saw the little referee switch, the first thing that came to my mind was, ah, a corrupted referee. I expected Triple H to be the referee, but... The referee switch, the fast count, that's probably going to be the going forward storyline. But Daniel Bryan picks up the win. So I didn't really think Orton was going to lose his championship this quickly. But because of the fast count, the referee switch, and Triple H of course still being a heel no matter what he said in the opener. There's going to be more repercussion from the main event. Okay, so Night of Champions. Not the best Night of Champions I've seen. No, it's not. Did it give us the right results? Yes, it did. Did it surprise us in a few areas? Yes, it did. But it doesn't really matter what I think because it's the people. The people I want to hear. People, share your thoughts. What was Match of the Night? What was your favorite moment what was your worst moment just give me your feedback and thank you very much for watching and from the true pipe bomb from the true wwe champion or should i say world heavyweight champion me nj thank you very much tune in for my raw review and good bye